めでたやな。君が恵みは久方の光のどけき。
Wow, a powerful performance. That was Mr. Tomo Yoshikakushi and everybody. Please give him another round of applause. Welcome to kick off the official meeting of the third Global Conference on Strengthening Synergies Between the Paris Agreement on Climate Change and the 2030 Agenda for Sustainable Development. Please welcome Ms. Sawako Shirahase, Senior Vice Rector of the United Nations University here in Tokyo, Japan, and Assistant Secretary General of the United Nations. Ms. Shirahase, please. Thank you very much. Thank you for the introduction. Excellencies, distinguished guests and participants, good evening, good afternoon, and good morning from Tokyo, Japan. On behalf of the United Nations University, I would like to welcome all participants in the third global confer conference on strengthening synergies between the Paris Agreement and the 2030 Agenda for Sustainable Development, which is taking place at UNU in Tokyo and online. I also would like to express our gratitude on your enthusiasm on this conference. We are nearing the midpoint of implementation for the 2030 Agenda. However, as we all are aware, the world is facing multiple serious challenges. We are in the same boat to achieve the sustainable development goals, but at the same time, we are different in various ways. The places where we live, the impact which we receive, the extent of recovery and improvement which we benefit. We all are facing various social risks, including COVID-19 pandemic and conflict in Ukraine and other places, which could trigger the, a global energy crisis. Climate change is accelerating with worsening impact across the globe. The growing energy crisis is pouring billions more dollars into fossil fuel, hampering the global commitment to re realizing decarbonization by mid-century to achieve the 1.5 degree Celsius goal of the Paris Agreement. Such compounding goal, global risks have serious impact on sustainable development across its environment, environmental, societal, and economic dimensions. They are exacerbating poverty and inequality, and it's a long way to go for achieving social equity and guaranteeing human rights for all. There is an urgent need to identify and implement solutions that can simultaneously achieve multiple goals for the 2030 Agenda and the Paris Agreement by maximizing synergies and minimizing trade-offs. We must transform energy, food, and urban systems in a sustainable way through innovative interventions, utilizing finance, governance, science and technology and multi-stakeholder partnership. Now is the time for action. I would like to congratulate our partners, the UN Development of Economic Social Affairs, the UN Framework Convention on Climate Change Secretariat, the Ministry of the Environment of Japan, and Institute for Global Environmental Strategies for successfully opening the Global Synergy Conference uh, here today. Through intensive discussion during the conference, I'm confident that we will produce important outcomes to accelerate action on enhancing synergies between climate change 
and SDGs at the global, national, and local levels. Thank you very much for your attention. Thank you. Thank you very much, Professor Shirahase. So we, to uh, continue with the launch of the first 26 decarbonization leading areas, we will have to reset the, um, the stage here. So please, uh, we appreciate your patience. Please wait a while. Thank you. All right, thank you so much for your patience. Um, now we will proceed to the launch of the first 26 decarbonization leading areas in Japan. Uh, this initiative was pioneered by the Ministry of the Environment, Government of Japan. And to introduce it, please welcome His Excellency, Mr. Tsuyoshi Yamaguchi, Minister of the Environment, Government of Japan, who will be telling us more about the initiative. Minister, the floor is yours. Thank you. Hello, everybody. My name is Yamaguchi Tsuyoshi, Minister of the Environment Japan. Well, this is the first time here for me, but this is a great place. I'm very happy to be here today. Thank you. It's a great pleasure to host the third global conference on strengthening synergies between the Paris Agreement on Climate Change and the 2030 Agenda for Sustainable Development in Japan today. Well, I thank all of you here today for participating in this conference. As you understand from today's theme, climate change and the SDGs are closely related, and it is imperative to strengthen their synergies. I have asked the mayors of Amagasaki City and Kamishihoro Town as selected leading decarbonization areas to present the decarbonization activities, which are good examples of synergies in Japan. I hope that throughout, through this conference, we will achieve fruitful results and create solid foundation for people to live happy, happy lives. I look forward to lively exchange of views with you today. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, Minister Yamaguchi. If you could kindly take right. the seat over there, uh, closest to me, that seat over there. Thank you. So as uh, stated by uh, Minister Yamaguchi just now, uh, we have representatives from two of the 26 decarbonization leading areas in Japan here with us today. And they will be very briefly sharing some of their initiatives with us. So please first welcome Ms. Kazumi Inamura, mayor of Amagasaki City in Hyogo Prefecture in Japan, who is joining us, I believe, online. Hello. Can you hear us? Yes. Good evening, everyone. The floor is yours. Oh, yes. OK. Yes. Good evening, everyone. I'm Kazumi Inamura, the mayor of Amagasaki City in Japan. Three years from now, the farm team bedrock grounds of the Hanshin Tigers, one of the most popular teams in Japanese professional baseball, will be relocated and developed on a park site in our city. Amagasaki City is fully committed to energy conservation and will install equipment using renewable energy in all possible areas, areas throughout the grounds and park to create a zero carbon baseball park. The baseball team is owned by an electric railway company, so we will also give our support to zero carbon transportation, making use of renewable energy at train station and converting local buses to electric vehicles. Amagasaki was developed as an industrial city and in the past has suffered from severe pollution. However, 
we decided to build on this experience, and now the city puts emphasis on the symbiotic policy between economy and the environment. Last year, Amagasaki declared a climate emergency. But unfortunately, there is still a gap between those citizens who express concern about this situation and those who do not. We expect many baseball fans to visit the baseball park. So we hope to reach more people than ever before with our message and encourage them to join action toward their carbon through this project, this project decarbonization leading areas. I'll work hard to ensure the initiative in Amagasaki becomes a role model for many other sports facilities across Japan. Thank you very much. Thank you so much, Mayor. I think we're all excited about that ballpark. Now, uh, please welcome Mr. Mitsugi Takenaka, Mayor of uh, Kamishihoro Town in Hokkaido Prefecture. Mayor, please. Uh, I'm Takenaka. I am the mayor of the Kamishihoro town. Thank you very much for inviting me to this conference today. Our town is located in the middle of Hokkaido, and our area is 700 square kilometers and 5,000 people, and there are 45,000 cows. Since 2019, we are using the livestock waste to generate electricity. And the electricity is supplied to the town and also the households. And we are promoting the local production and local consumption of electricity. Across the town, we are trying to realize, we are trying to realize decarbonization in order to achieve our goals. We are trying to have the mega solar by the public-private partnership. We are trying to improve resilience and help businesses and households introduce solar uh, power generation. We are encouraging switching to EVs and autonomous bus or the drone deliveries are expected to be introduced so that we would like to maximize and optimize the transportation. So we are trying to decarbonize from multiple fronts. And our efforts are not limited to the local governments, but also the organization of the citizens are very important, and citizens need to be part of this, and the whole town is working towards decarbonization. It is an effort of a small town, but eventually, I hope this will spread across Japan and across the world. We would like to lead the way as a model and continue to move forward. Thank you very much. Mayor Takenaka, excuse me, Mayor, 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 sir, um, if you could kindly sit next to Minister, that would be great. Thank you so much. Okay, so in addition to these Japanese local government leaders, a few leaders in this space from around the globe have joined us to share um, how they are too racing towards net zero. So first we have a message from Ms. Maimuna Mohamed Sharif, Executive Director of the United Nations Human Settlements Program, UN Habitat. Let's take a look. if the video plays. Uh, 
Sorry, it seems like we have some technical issues. Sorry. Okay, perhaps we can move on and then we'll circle back. Is that okay? Distinguished delegates, colleagues, friends, ladies and gentlemen, greetings from Nairobi. Our shared planet needs healing. There has never been such a dire need to address the rapid environmental degradations, onset of natural disasters and climate reality facing humanity. Cities generate 70% of global emissions. They are hit islands, diminishing the quality of life and opportunities. But there are also hotbeds of innovation. Cities and their communities generate solutions for a better and sustainable future. The 2030 Agenda for Sustainable Development cannot succeed without bold actions for a zero carbon transformation of our world and our cities. SDG 13 needs a drastic reversal in emissions. At the same time, the battle for sustainable development will be won a loss in cities. To reach the targets of SDG 11, we need green and clean cities for all, green building, zero carbon mobility, a circular economy, and healthy places with no pollution. In 2023, the high-level political forum will review the progress of SDG 11, and through it, we will see the progress of all environmental SDGs and the Paris Agreement. Ladies and gentlemen, from the high-level meetings on the progress of the new urban agenda last April in New York, and then from the 11th session of the World Urban Forum in Katowice, which concluded last week, I want to highlight the following calls. One, renew the support to multilateral system to respond to challenges and opportunities of our urban era. Second, protect our planet from the bottom up in collaboration with city leaders and communities. Third, ensure that innovative, transformative urban development as enshrined in the new urban agenda is an action by and for all countries, cities, and communities. I compliment the Government of Japan and the Ministry of Environment for its support to the synergistic action we need. During my missions to Japan next week, I look forward to deepening the collaboration. Thank you. Thank you very much. That was an inspiring Next, please welcome Mr. Mahadi Jaina, Mayor of the City of Kuala Lumpur in Malaysia, who is with us online. Hello, Mayor. Your, the floor is yours. Good evening to one and all from Kuala Lumpur. Thank you very much for having me in this global conference. I am very pleased to have this opportunity to share with you Kuala Lumpur's experiences and achievements in advancing our climate and sustainable development agenda, especially via effective international partnership. In particular, Kuala Lumpur City Hall has been a proud partner of the Tokyo Metropolitan Government, or TMG, and IGES, IGES through the Kuala Lumpur to through the Tokyo to Kuala Lumpur Low Carbon Systems Project since August 2019. This fruitful collaboration has enabled Kuala Lumpur City Hall to strengthen our climate ambitions and achieve steady progress towards carbon neutrality by 2050. I'm pleased to share that to date, we have implemented several low carbon initiatives in line with our vision. Alongside, year marking was Maju as a carbon neutral growth center in Kuala Lumpur. We have also undertaken 
other endeavors, namely increased in installation of solar PV systems on Kuala Lumpur City Hall owned facilities. Implementation of a regulation on developers, which requires the utilization of at least 30% of renewable energy in their projects. Incorporation of a new bicycle and completion of a pedestrian network lined with shady trees. Development of new neighborhood parks, a new solid waste recycling center, and a rainwater harvesting system for new development projects. And encouraging residents of Kuala Lumpur to embrace low carbon lifestyle through an SDG awareness program together with public school students and residents associations. Beyond this, our partnership with TMG and IJS has also provided Kuala Lumpur with a clearer perspective of other opportunities available to us in tackling the climate crisis, including good technology options that yield energy and electricity bill savings, institutional strategies and approaches that can be adapted to our needs and capacity building for Kuala Lumpur City Hall's staff. Ladies and gentlemen, our efforts and the wide benefits that it has brought to Kuala Lumpur are the outcome of the hard work of many parties. To that end, I would like to convey my heartfelt gratitude to our dedicated partners, TMG, Ministry of Environment Japan, IGS, and University Technology Malaysia, who have worked tirelessly for the past three years to help make Kuala Lumpur a more sustainable and resilient city for all. Kuala Lumpur City Hall remains deeply committed to our green agenda, and we will continue to take steps forward to achieve our vision of Kuala Lumpur as a sustainable, resilient, safe, inclusive, and happy city for all. Thank you. Thank you very much, Dr. Tsiri Mahadi. Now, last but certainly not least, representing ICLE, a global network of local governments committed to sustainable urban development, please welcome Ms. Kobe Brand, who is with us online. Thank you. Thank you very, very much for this opportunity to be here with you today. And I would like to first congratulate the Japanese government for successfully selecting 26 decarbonization leading areas. What an achievement and what an acknowledgement. At ICLE, local governments for sustainability, we believe that the most successful approach to sustainability is to effectively engage local governments in its planning and implementation. Local governments are at the front line of multiple crises, from global pandemics to climate hazards, inflation and inequality. Local governments are constantly challenged on the ground, while they are always under pressure to maintain and improve quality of the life of their citizens. Climate change is undoubtedly the most pressing issue of our time, but we know that successful projects need to consider the most vulnerable in our society. Investments towards climate-friendly technologies and projects are needed, but we should never ignore the impact of these projects, which may influence the lives of others. Local governments provide multiple public service to its citizens, and therefore the experience accumulated at the local government level is fundamentally multi-sectoral. This is why, indeed, local governments understand that synergy is the key for successful implementation of actions on the ground. The Japanese government has created its regional decarbonization roadmap through consultation that involved ministries and local and regional governments. The outcome of these discussions 
was this roadmap with a set of very concrete measures and strategies that supports local and regional governments in its challenge to decarbonization, putting local revitalization as the fundamental principle of these measures. With the Japanese government listening and supporting local governments, I have high expectations that decarbonization leading areas, this initiative will be indeed a very big, huge success. I'm also encouraged uh, to know that the Japanese government is actively supporting international city-to-city -city and peer-to-peer -peer collaboration as part of its decarbonization policies. Knowledge sharing will not only help the local government uh, around the world, but will also enable national governments to be more resilient and sustainable. As ICLI, we are ready to support these initiatives and continue to advocate these approaches and activities taken by the Japanese government so that so often uh, others will follow. Finally, I would like to congratulate all those who are selected in the first round and wish the best of luck for the successful implementation of these inspirational great projects, exactly the projects that the world needs right now. Thank you very much and congratulations. Thank you so much, Miss Friends. And thank you all very much for joining us for this special event. It is truly inspiring to see how local governments are really paving the way towards net zero. Before we close this part, please give the speakers yet another round of applause. Mr. Yamaguchi and Mayor Takanaka, please exit the stage. Thank you. Now, allow us to move on to the final part of this session. Today, the Global Compact Network Japan, GCNJ, and the Institute for Global Environmental Strategies, IGIS, will be launching the English version of the SDGs Progress Report 2022, survey results on the efforts of GCNJ companies and organizations. GCNJ and IGIS are part of the technical advisory group supporting the convening of this conference. To commemorate the launch, please welcome representatives from both organizations onto the stage to say a few words. Ms. Sandra Wu, who is the, a GCNJ board member, UN Global Compact board member, as well as the chairperson and CEO of Kokusai Kogyo, and Mr. Kazuhiko Takeuchi, also a GCNJ board member and the president of IGES. So starting with Ms. Wu, may I ask you to first say a few words about the report, and then Professor Takeuchi. Yes, thank you. Uh, Your Excellencies, uh, distinguished guests and the participants, uh, it's my great honor to attend this conference tonight. Um, all of us as uh, members of a global society and the resident on this, own, this one and the only planet have a responsibility to work towards the sustainable development goals. And among the various stakeholders and the members of society, we business have an uh, extra large responsibility. In November 2021, the UN 76th uh, General Assembly reaffirmed through a renewed resolution, the Global Compact's mandate uh, to engage the private sector in advancing the sustainable development goals. The resolution affirmed that uh, this is our rule, our role, and the role of our 70 local networks around the world uh, to erase ambition and achieve stronger private sector engagement. Through our new strategy for 2021 and uh, 2020 to 2023, the Global Compact, both the global and the local part, are working together as one global compact to persuade the global business community and its leaders to scale up their contribution to the 2030 Agenda and the Paris Agreement. 
we are working with uh, with urgency because this work is imperative. We cannot fail. Global Compact Network Japan also take this responsibility seriously. We work to accelerate ambition of overall Japanese private sector to acting through and with Global Compact participant companies in the nine years we have left from now to 2030. A key step to achieve uh, to achieving acceleration is outlining ambitious goals and demonstrating where the private sector through our GC participant companies stand right now. To this end, we have produced the SDG Progress uh, Report 2022, a comprehensive uh, survey of the efforts of Global Compact Network Japan companies and organization together with Aegis. The 500 companies in Global Compact Network Japan are working and will continue to work together to become the human face of the Global Compact, as suggested by the late General Secretary, Kofi Annan. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, Ms. Wu. <laughs> Professor Takeuchi, a few words from your side, please. Thank you very much, Erin san uh, for your introduction. Uh, His Excellency uh, Minister, Mr. Yamaguchi, uh, distinguished guests, uh, ladies and gentlemen. Thank you very much for giving us the opportunity to launch our newest report, SDG Progress Report 2022, survey results on the efforts of GC and J companies and organizations today. Soon after the adoption of the 2030 Agenda in 2015, I just began work in collaboration with the GCNJ to develop a diverse range of activities, including the joint translation of the SDG Compass fact-finding survey on the SDGs for GCNJ members and the preparation of reports based on these surveys. In recent years, the private sector has been increasingly involved in the SDGs, but it has been pointed out that this has not led to true transformation. Therefore, for our latest survey, we focus particularly on SDGs 5, 8, 12, 13, and 16, and considered what companies and organizations should achieve or implement by 2030 based on internationally recognized principles and benchmarks. We then put these suggestions into a question and option format for the survey. The objective is to help companies and organization measure their own progress on the SDGs and promote their activities. The results of the survey show that more than 80% of the member companies and organizations have integrated the SDGs into their management strategies. However, looking at the initiative for individual goals, this is not enough to achieve the SDGs. In particular, for gender equity, decent work, and human rights, and preventing corruption, challenges were found in basic progress. The survey results also revealed that companies and organizations have been strongly influenced by government policies, laws, and regulations. The key going forward will be listen to stakeholders in the value chain, gather data, and strengthen strategies and approaches, as well as to develop a structure to realize the goals. It is no longer enough for the private sector to simply say, we are contributing to the SDGs according to our own standard. Align organizational sustainability with social and environmental sustainability is a key step to becoming a company or organization that truly contributes to the achievement of the SDGs. 
And uh, of course, uh, uh, the achievement of the Paris uh, Agreement. In this conference could provide momentum for the dissemination of tools that encourage accelerated actions through surveys such as this one from Japan, then private sector efforts on the SDGs, including those for goal 13, are expected to be strengthened across the whole world. Let me assure you that IGES will continue to act as a change agent, cooperating with the GCNJ and other private sector organizations to contribute to the achievement of the goals of the Paris Agreement and SDGs. Thank you very much for your kind attention. Thank you, Professor Takeuchi. There is no doubt that this will be an incredible resource to understand the trends of the Japanese business sector. So um, we, to comm commemorate the launch of the report, I have two copies here and they will take a photo. Congratulations again. Thank you very much. This concludes the welcome ceremony and special events session. Thank you very much for your participation.